Welcome to The Prince Eats. Here's a quick video for chili. Ingredients are in the description. If you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. This one is easy, so let's jump right into it. First things first, and that's starting with your fresh ingredients. What I have diced here is a sweet onion, green bell pepper, and poblano pepper. I also have diced celery and minced garlic. What you see here is fresh sage, and I also have scallions for garnish. For seasonings, I have the traditional lineup of chili seasonings, including dark red pepper, cumin, paprika. I'll list all the spices in the ingredients list. Grab some fresh ground beef. Any ground beef will do. You can also consider veal or beef and pork blend. The beef and pork blend adds more flavor. For this recipe, I use dry red wine. It's optional, but it does add depth of flavor. I recommend Cabernet Sauvignon. It works well. You'll also need diced tomatoes and dark kidney beans. While some say the kidney beans or any beans in chili is optional, I say they're absolutely necessary because they add additional texture, and there's no secret that the beans help to thicken the chili if you don't want to use flour. Put these ingredients off to the side. Grab your pot and put it over medium-high heat. Here I'm using a Dutch oven. Add a little bit of oil, just enough to cook the veggies, so that we don't have the chili simmering for a long period of time. We'll start with sauteing the veggies. Add the sweet onion, celery, and peppers. Cook long enough until the veggies become slightly tender. On medium heat, this should take approximately three to five minutes. Add a few pinches of salt. Here I'm using kosher salt. Be careful with the amount of salt that you add to this dish. You can always add more, but you can't take the salt out once it's in there. Create some space in the center of your pot so that you can fry your tomato paste. Over medium high heat, you want to cook this for approximately two to three minutes. You'll know it's ready when it turns dark red. Dump in your meat and allow most of it to brown. If a few light pink spots remain, don't worry. This chili will have an opportunity to simmer at the end of this cooking process. The meat will finish cooking during the simmer. Before we add the garlic, you'll dump in all of the seasonings, just to give it an opportunity to fully incorporate. Mix long enough until the seasonings disappear. Create a little bit of space in the center of your pot. We'll use this space to cook the garlic. Depending on how you like your garlic, you can cook this anywhere from three to five minutes. Dump in the fresh sage and stir until fully incorporated. If using red wine, this is the time to pour it in. You want to allow it to simmer until the strong smell of alcohol dissipates. That can take approximately eight to 10 minutes. Allow this to simmer on medium-high heat and the liquid should reduce by half. When simmering and bubbly, you can add the diced tomatoes. Here I use approximately 48 ounces. Pour in a little bit of the beef stock. Depending on how thick you want your chili to be, start with a little bit of stock. If you desire to loosen your chili later on, you can certainly do so by adding more stock. You just don't want to do it all up front and risk thinning the flavor of your chili. You also don't want to spend too much time simmering to cook the liquid out of the chili. Lastly, add the kidney beans and stir until fully incorporated. I'm adding the kidney beans last, so by the time the cooking process is complete, we'll have whole kidney beans when it comes to plating. Cover and allow to simmer until your desired texture is achieved. I like my chili to have a slight liquid base, so I simmered mine for approximately 30 minutes. And in just a few easy steps, you're done. All that remains is to top and garnish. Here I topped it with some white cheddar cheese and sour cream. And I garnished with fresh scallions. Those three are great compliments to this chili. Here's a tip. If you or your guests desire a spicier chili, add some red pepper flakes. The great thing about this dish is the chili gets richer after every reheat. Dinner is served. If you'd like to see more simple and easy meal ideas like this one, visit theprinceeats.com and The Prince Eats on Instagram.